space oddity, relatively speaking. Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle. Hello and welcome to Earth Alien Protomet. Today I'll be taking a look at Ultra Galaxy Daikaiju Battle, or Mega Monster Battle. This series, based on the arcade game Mega Monster Battle Ultra Monsters, aired on a pay-per-view service, BS11, unlike other entries which aired on standard television. And that's not the only thing that makes this show unique. The crew of the Zap Spacey cargo ship Space Pendragon are sent to the planet Boris to investigate why the Earth colony on the planet ceased communications. When they arrive, they discover the planet is overrun with kaiju, despite the creatures having seemingly gone extinct 50 years earlier. As they investigate what happened to the colony, they encounter a mysterious man named Ray, who is somehow able to control kaiju. Can they uncover the mystery of both Ray and the reappearance of the kaiju? Like I mentioned earlier, Mega Monster Battle is a unique entry in the Ultra series, as it lacks the giant alien heroes, like Ultraman and Ultra 7, etc., but also tells an ongoing narrative story, unlike the Ultra Q entries. The mystery surrounding Ray is something that even he's interested in solving, as he isn't sure about his own past himself. What he does know is that he can control monsters using a device called a Battlenizer. The monsters under his control include Gomera, his main monster, which has a variety of attacks from the creature's history, including its ultra-oscillatory wave, Litra, a larger version of the monster first introduced in the very first episode of Ultra Q, which is capable of surrounding its body in flames, and lastly Eliking, which, like its name implies, utilizes electrical attacks, such as its electric discharge beam. And it's not just his monsters aiding him, as he soon finds himself joining the crew of the Space Pendragon as a temporary member. Commanding the crew is Captain Huga, nicknamed Boss. He's a hot-blooded man capable of taking charge in any situation, pushing through any obstacle with determination. Harana is his second-in-command and the most invested in the search for answers, as her brother was in charge of the Boris colony. An ace pilot and a tough woman, she remains serious even in the most dire of situations. Kumano is the engineer of this ship, and despite his claims to the contrary, he's an absolute wizard at repairing or upgrading the ship as needed. And finally is Oki, the newest member of the crew next to Rei, who is utterly fascinated by Kaiju, having studied them in university. As such, he's the one to identify the monsters the team come across and can provide valuable intel on them. While Ray's monsters are the ones that show up the most in the series, they're hardly the only ones that appear. And the various monsters that do show up are taken from throughout the history of the Ultra series, making for a wide variety of dream matches. And the mystery of their reemergence after their apparent extinction does tie into Ray's mysterious past, as does the appearance of a mysterious woman who shares his ability to control monsters. But I'm not going to reveal just how it ties together. I gotta leave you with some reason to watch the show after all. While short at only 13 episodes, Ultra Galaxy Mega Monster Battle gained quite a legacy. There was a sequel, Never Ending Odyssey, which was then followed up by a movie, Ultra Galaxy Legend Mega Monster Battle, the movie, which itself had a lasting impact on the franchise. But even on its own, this show is well worth a watch and a nice change of pace for the Ultra series, so I strongly recommend giving it a watch. Until next time, I'm Protomet. See ya.